provide. He will provide. He will provide. He will provide. I know he'll provide. He will provide. Raise those hands. If you know he will provide. He will provide. Clap your hands. Tell God thank you. Open your mouth. Give God a praise in here. Look over at your neighbor and say, neighbor, shake it off. The only way you're going to get out of what you're going through, you got to shake it off. Get, come on, shake it off. Something about to break out in here. I said something is about to break out. You better give God a praise in this place. Something about to come loose. Somebody say praise him. You got to come out with your hands up. Somebody shout, I'm coming out. 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 Because I know he will provide. He will provide. He will. He will provide. I know he will. I know he'll provide. I know he will. 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 Wave your hand. I know he will. I know he will. I know he will. He will provide. He will provide. Yes, he will provide. Yes, he will provide. You might as well praise him. Yes, he will. He will provide. Yes, he will. Oh, yeah. Yes, we. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Can I just high five at somebody? It's a neighbor. Neighbor. He will provide. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? My, 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 my. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Just kind of lift those hands and kind of worship him a little bit right there where you are. Right where you are this morning. Give him a worship. Songwriter said, my worship is for real. It's for real. God want people that would worship him. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You praise him for what he's done, what he's doing, and what he's going to do. But, but you worship him for who he is. I'm bound, I'm bound to worship him. Oh yes, let's, let's give him a moment this morning. Huh? To worship him. Come, come on, lift those hands and just, just worship him this morning. About you, but I've been through too much. I've been through too much. Oh Lord, not, not to to worship Him. I just gotta worship Him. I've been through too much. Not, not to to worship Him. Oh, I've been through I've too, been through too much. much. My brothers and sisters in Christ. Just a 
tell him he's a big God, he's a great God, he's an awesome God, he's a mighty God, he's a wonderful captain, he's a prince of peace.
in Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. Oh, the presence of the God has engulfed this place. I, I see a glory of the presence of God in this place this morning. Want your glory. How many wants it on his glory? I, I feel his glory this morning. I feel his glory in this place this morning. We need your glory. Come on in, God. Thank you for your glory. Shekana. Shekana glory is in this place this morning. Shekinah glory. <laughs> Shekinah glory. Solomon, when he built the temple, and he got ready to get up and minister, but the glory filled the place that he couldn't minister. I feel that this morning. I feel a glory. That's in this place this morning and whatever. And when God feels the place like he's feeling it this morning, chains got to fall off. Shackles have to fall. Yoke destroying, burden removing, anointing. Breakthroughs, overcoming power, healing and deliverance. Tumors disappear. Pollux, sugar diabetes, high blood pressure, all of this stuff begin to disappear when the Shekinah glory comes in the house of God. worship you this morning. Thank you. feel his presence this morning uh, if you feel like I feel it is I'm, I'm excited because of the anointing of the God that's moving upon my life and I know that when the anointing comes to the head and it flows the way it's flowing it, it's got to flow to the hem of the garment to the tail and everybody that's assembled here this morning, and if you're listening to me, uh, watching me through airways, uh, through technology, uh, God is saying to the church this morning that we need an upper room experience. The church needs an upper room experience. Uh, and, and, and I know you don't understand what I mean by an upper room experience, uh, then I'm going to make it plain for you. 
that we need an upper room experience. As we get settled, we need an upper room experience. The Bible says in Acts chapter 1 and verse 6 through 8, when they therefore will come together, they asked of him saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the season which the Father had put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And in Acts chapter 1 verse 13 through 14, he says uh, these words, And when they will come in, I need you to remember that. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room, an upper room experience, where abode both Peter and John, James and John, Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, the son of Theus, and Simon Zelotes and Judas, the brother of Jesus. John, the brother of Jesus. These all continued one, with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary. Remember, Mary, the mother of Jesus. And with his brethren. Now in Luke chapter 24 and verse 29, 49, rather, it says, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city, tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. And that's what I'll talk about this morning. It said the upper room. An upper room experience. The, the, the church people and the reason why we're going through and, and we see all of these things happening is because of the fact that the church has came to place not pleasant growth, but the church of people who said Jesus Christ is their savior has came to a point of safety. They've came to a point of just being satisfied at going to church. But it reminds me that there is an upper room experience that many people who have believed in Jesus Christ, but they have never had an upper room experience. An upper room experience, there's an encounter with God that takes you out of the mundane into a supernatural life that what's going on around you it doesn't affect you because greater is he that's on the inside that is in the world 
But see, if you're just talking something and you're not possessing what you're talking, it's hard to go to battle to a fight without a weapon. See, see, see it's one thing to say I'm fighting, but do you have anything to fight with? See, it's one thing to say I am a Christian, but when trouble comes, what do you have? that you can fight with. Can, can I get a witness in here? What, what do you have that call you to stand when everybody else is falling away? What do you have that says, don't you slay me, yet will I trust you? See, if you never had an upper room experience it's hard to have the kind of faith that moves mountains when you don't have, you don't possess a power that builds up your most holy faith by praying in that power of the Holy Ghost. You need that upper room experience. The church needs the upper room experience. For years and years they have meandered around, but the word of God plainly says here, Jesus says, I'm here with you now. I can protect you now, but I'm going away. In that verse, in Luke, he, he says, I'm going away. But, but I got to send something for you. Even though you my disciples, you, you don't have what it takes to hold on. When trouble comes, you're going to give up. When folk begin to lie on you, you're going to give up. When people don't treat you right at church, you're going home. I wish I had some help here. But when you have an upper room experience, there is something different about you. People can't put their hands on it. They can't put their finger on it. But there's something, there's a charisma. Somebody said, you got charisma. No, it's the, charisma means a smearing on, meaning that you got an anointing. You, just like grease, it's smeared all over your face. You know when somebody greasy. Come on, somebody, because they got a smearing on. There's something about their appearance that lets you know they greased up and all up. I wish I had some, because they got a shine on their face. Anybody know about an upper room? Do, do I have anybody here this morning that said, if you hadn't had that upper room experience, that don't mean that you're not a good person. That don't mean that you're not trying to do right. That means that you just need to get more. You need more of what God got to offer you. God offered you more. He left a gift. That gift is the Holy Ghost. And if you don't possess that gift, you are, you are shortchanging yourself. You, you, could, you, you could do some things <laughs> that is unexplainable, un, that, that people think impossible, if you get yourself full of the Holy Ghost. Can I get any witnesses here? You need an upper room experience. Yes, yes. Why would I live in a cold world? A world that you don't know where the devil coming from without something that gives me a discerning spirit. Why would I live in a world where I know that it's cold, and I have nothing to warm me. Kind of like the old lady that the gas ran out in the city. And they all were talking about, well, we need to make sure everybody got gas. And somebody said, there's an old lady. She's lived in this old hut down by herself. We need to go down and see about her. They got there, they worried about the old lady, wouldn't worry about anybody else. They got there and got to the room. They said, what are you doing? You smiling and laughing. She says, let me tell you, I don't depend on your gas. I got my own fire. I wish I had somebody in here. Let, let me tell you, you can't depend on people. You can't depend on the choir to warm you up. You can't depend on the preacher to preach you happy. You can't depend on folks to love you happy. You got to build your own fire. 
You got to be like Jeremiah even though he said I'm going to sit down and go somewhere in a cave and never mention the name of the Lord. He said, but when I got in that cave, Brother Ryan, Brother Ryan, he said, that thing was like fire set up in my bones. And I, when I hold my pizza, I got this thing, I got, I, I don't know. I, See, when you when you have an upper room experience, and you can't you can't hold yourself, you you can't sit there and be quiet. It, it's something about this thing make your hands go up, make your feet get light, make your head start going back, make you shake your weave off. I, 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 I wish I had somebody in here to know. It's something about this thing that make people have to suckle you and hold you in, and your feet get loose, and they suckle. Somebody say upper room, upper room, upper room. Well, I would not live in a world that uh, I didn't have a power that could help me thread over scorpions. I wouldn't live in a world that I didn't have a power that I could lay hands on the sick and they recover. I want to be able to lay hands on my own self. You can't depend on pastor to be there all the time. Ain't God all right. Pastor can't be everywhere. That's why Jesus said, why I'm here. I, I, I'm, I'm going to do these things, but I'm, I'm going away. And when I go away, greater things you're going to do in my name. Because I'm going to send you another comforter. I wouldn't live in a world without an upper room experience that when you need comforting you don't get a phone call you don't get nobody to come by your house but if you got an upper room experience he said I'm going away but even the friends not there loved ones walk away he said I am the, that Holy Ghost will comfort you oh I wish I had some help here I'm not going to live and go to church where church dead, cold, and dry. I don't want to be in no worship service where people look like they start hung out to dry. I'm not going to no worship service. When this worship service get like that, I got to praise him by myself. I praise him all by myself. I don't want no dead, dry, cold. Because this thing I got on the inside of me stirs me up. It shakes me up. It makes my hand move. It makes my mouth fly open. Sometimes I speak in an unknown tongue and people don't have it. They don't understand it. But it don't mean you're going to hell. But if you don't have it, you just don't have it. I, I wish I had somebody in here that know what it feels like when the power of God begins to flow in your life. When the Holy Ghost shower your life. When it comes down upon you, you can't hold your feet. You in your kitchen. You got your hand lifted up. You jumping up and down. This thing that I got, the world can't take it away. Yes. An upper room. An upper room experience. The, what the things that we're going through right now, the church got to get to the upper room. They got to get to the upper room and drive me to my first point. Oh, why is there such a power struggle in the world? Because it's human nature for us to have, to want to have power. But Jesus says to them in Acts, he says to them, Acts 1 and 6, he says these words. He said, when they therefore will come together, they asked him saying, when? Oh, y'all don't hear me. When you going to restore the kingdom of Israel? When you going to put us in power? When you going to give me some power so we can rule over people, so I can sit in a position, so I can uh, have a ego, and, and I'm, I'm this and I'm that? He said, let me tell you something. You worried about the wrong thing. 
Why, why, why do people struggle and fight for power? Why, why do they fight for power? Because it's just human nature. He, even in marriages, everybody trying to, husband want to control, wife want to control. Everybody wants control, even on your job. People want control because people fight. Because, and a lot of times the reason why they fight for power is because of low self-esteem. They fight for it because they don't, they, don't, they don't have a lot of belief in themselves. They want people to look up to them and bow down. They want people to validate them. But he says, I tell you what, don't worry about that. You're going to receive power <laughs> after. After you have an upper room experience, you're going to have all the power you need. If you want power today, you need an upper room experience. If you want power, get an upper room experience. After the Holy Ghost has come up on you, ye shall. <laughs> you're gonna receive power, and then you're gonna have you're gonna be a witness. When this thing get on you, it ain't no blessed be quiet. It ain't no sitting there. Said, hey, can you come on, praise the Lord with me? No, 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 no. We're gonna have to try to get somebody to sit you down. I'm talking about when you really, when you really had an upper room experience, nobody have to beg you. This thing will start stirring up itself. And you, 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 you holler Jesus, and all of a sudden you you feel something moving. I have anybody here, but you, you know, you get to church and you, you said, you know, I, I, they be, people be looking at me funny when I get up all the time. And I, I said, I'm not going to do that this time. I'm going to try to be. Coach Gray is kind of like coaches. You said, I ain't going to act a fool tonight. I'm going to sit over here on the sideline and, and I'm going to just sit here while you girl and try to act like a decent, intelligent coach. But soon, they do something crazy. <laughs> Because cause that passion, uh, y'all don't hear me. The passion on the inside of you. See, when you got the Holy Ghost on the inside of you, you can try to act intelligent all you want to. That Holy Ghost will drive, it drives out all pride, all selfishness, everything you got that you done build up in your mind. The Holy Ghost will drive out all of that stuff. Holy Ghost ain't got no big eyes and little use. The Holy Ghost look at everybody the same way. Your degrees goes out the window when the Holy Ghost comes. The program is thrown to the side. How many know the Holy Ghost will take over your little program? You got your program and you're trying to go through it and all of a sudden, sister so-and-so coming up next and all of a sudden the Holy Ghost hits you. You don't know who coming next. Come on, somebody. Because God done, done took over the program. You meant for an hour, but now you're there three hours gone. They said it held too long. Somebody ain't got the Holy Ghost. If the Holy Ghost came, you, you ain't never held too long. Just said the Holy Ghost held us up. And when the Holy Ghost held you up, that means God is doing something. And I'm not talking about ignorance now. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is not ignorant. It is intelligent. But if it does take over, you got to know the Holy Ghost. You got to know the Spirit of God. And when the real Spirit of God take over, you know it. You just say, yes, Lord. All you can do is just say, yes, Lord. Can you wave your hand and just say, yes, Lord. Can y'all say, take over this morning, God. Take over. Secondly, it's time for the church to come in. Somebody says it's time for us to come in. It says in Acts 1, 13, it said when, when, when they, this what it said, and when they come in. When, when, when they decided to come in, they went to the upper room. When, when they decided to come in, I need you to shout it with me right now, come in. When we come in, when we come in. What you saying, Pastor Hale? I'm saying when we come in for my backbiting. When we come in from hating on one another. When we come in for talking about one another. 
I'm not talking about Pleasant Grove. I'm talking about the church as a whole. When we stop pointing fingers at one another, when we come in from worried about all our little problems and all our little situations, when we come in out of mess, when we come in out of groups that huddle up together, when we come in, yes, I'm speaking today. Let, let me tell you, when we come in out of selfishness and self-righteousness, who ain't holy, and I'm holy than he, come on. When they came, somebody said when they came in. I need you to shout it real loud when they came. When we come in, see sometimes we're sitting in church but we're not in. Sometimes we're all over the church but we're not in. When, when you come in, that's when the power of God, you come to the upper room and you will have an upper room in and experience with God you never had before. Just don't come to church and sit here just because somebody said, come. Come in. Don't sit on the outside looking in. And you're sitting on the inside, but you're sitting on the outside still looking in, but you're afraid to come in. Put it back when they came in. They came in the upper room. Where both Peter, James, and John, and Andrew, Philip, Thomas, all of these men were disciples. Who is a disciple? What, what is the meaning of a disciple? The meaning of a disciple is a follower of Christ. There's not a person here this morning that's listening to me. There's not a person out there through technology listening to me that says they're not a follower of Christ. But I wonder how many people listening to me this morning can say, I've had an upper room experience. That's the whole key. The reason why we can't live the lives we want to live and live victoriously for God because we're trying to do it with our own works. But see, when the Holy Ghost come in, he'll lead, he'll guide, he's the discerner, he's a comforter, he's a keeper, he'll seal you, he'll protect you, he'll cover you. I wish I had some help here. And see, so many times we, we say what we ain't going to do. And Paul said, when I said what I wasn't going to do, I found myself doing the same thing I said I wasn't going to do. But the only thing that can keep me, who is it? That can deliver a wretch like me, he says. It's got to be the power of the Holy Ghost that covers me. I can't keep myself. When you said you wasn't going to say nothing back to nobody, you said it. See, the Holy Spirit come, it will stop your tongue. It'll tell you, don't say it. It'll tell you when to say it, how to say it. It'll give the Holy Ghost to give you wisdom because it, don't, it only speaks of himself. He don't speak of you. I, I wish I had some help here. He said when he is calm, he's going to speak of himself. He's he not going to speak of you. See, you speak of you. You're going to tell people what you think they ought to be told. But then when the Holy Ghost comes, he's going to give you what they need to be told. Because sometimes they don't need to be told off. They need to be told in. I had some help here. Somebody says an upper room experience. I don't care how long you've been in church. You need to make up in your mind that you're going to seek God as never before. I am going to have an encounter with God that I never had before. I want God to feel me. I want him to baptize me. I want him to just cover me with the Holy Ghost. Because the word, he said, you're going to be endued. The Greek word endu mean endu. It means that you're gonna be clothed. You're gonna be <laughs> you're gonna be clothed, be clothed in, and be arrayed in. You're gonna be arrayed. See, when the Holy Ghost comes, you ain't walking around. It's it's an arrayment. It's an ambience on your face. You wonder why? Say, how do you keep smiling? The Holy Ghost 
keep you smiling, keep you young, keep you looking good. Hallelujah. It don't let you age like that. I see people sometimes and I be like, you my age, really? Maybe I look older than I think, but when I look in the mirror, I don't look like that. The Holy Ghost don't let me see myself like that. The Holy Ghost let me see me 35 and kicking. Ain't God all right? See, a man, <laughs> so is a man thinking. Boy, we the old folk. Now, I ain't no old folk. You can talk all you want to. The Holy Ghost don't let me say, I ain't no old folk. I got too much work to do for God to say I'm an old folk. You, you start saying you old? You Come on, somebody. Stop saying you old. Stop saying you sick. The Holy Ghost don't speak like that. The Holy Ghost speaks and I'm well. By his stripes, I am healed. I'm young. The Holy Ghost speaks like Caleb spoke. When he was, he said, I, I he was 85 years old. He said, I feel like I did 45 years ago. They tried to tell him, okay, Caleb, you said you're supposed to have this mountain, but you old now. You take, he said, let me tell you one time. Give me what belongs to me. I feel like I'm 45. I, I, he was 80 years old. He said, I feel like I'm 45. In other words, I'm not going to keep on talking about I'm old. The more you talk about your old, the more your hair going to get gray. The more your legs going to get stiff. The more your back going to start hurting. The more your bones going to start hurting. Everything going to start hurting when you're talking about your old. Somebody said, you'll stop talking like that if you get an upper room experience. Once country, lift your hand and say, just get an upper room experience. Shout it real loud. Upper room, upper room, upper room. Not only that, in Luke 24 and 49, he says these words. He said, and behold, I send thee promise of my father upon you, but, but, but. See, some of y'all, what you don't understand, as soon as you join the church, you start running. As soon as you get one word, I'm a preacher. Oh, y'all don't hear me. As soon as you hear one sermon, you're trying to preach at the nail shop. As soon as you hear one sermon, you're on a job. Talking about to come to church. He said, Terry. Don't, 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 don't just blab and grab. Don't just jump up too fast. You're missing something. You're missing some vital ingredients. That's it. That's it. That cake ain't ready. Even though you got to stir it up. You, you stir it up, you go, oh, thank you, Lord. You thank God for coming in, but that cake ain't ready yet. How many know how to bake a cake? You ain't got all the ingredients in it, it'll fall on you. You ain't there cooking in the oven. I ain't gonna call no names. <laughs> ain't God all right. I know you ain't looking at my wife, man. <laughs> Why you think this half cake can cook a cake? Ain't God all right. Did I call her now? He, he over there at the drama. He looking at my wife. <laughs> ain't God all right. But if you don't have all the ingredients in there, it's going gonna, it's gonna to drop. In your Christian life, just because you're in the church, God says, Paul said, I follow on to know him. I want more of him. I want everything that he has left for me. And we are missing something in the church. And the reason why we don't see more souls saved, more bodies healed, church growing is because of the fact that we are missing an upper room experience. See the Holy Ghost when you got the Holy Ghost it just draws. Ain't God alright? Yes. What are you saying Pastor Hare? That, that's, that's an atheist that lived in this small town and that, that was a community and they had a church in that community and that church was, uh, was, was a good church. All the 
upperclassmen, everybody went to this church, but the atheist, he was a good man, but he didn't go to the church. He, he never went. He would never go. But one day the church caught on fire. And they were all rushing to the church to put the fire out. He rushed to the church too. And somebody said, hey, what you doing here? You don't ever come here. What you doing here now? He said, it's the first time I've seen the church on fire. <laughs> See, that's the problem with the church. The reason why people don't come. We got to get on. Look around your neighbor and say, we got to catch on fire. Catch on fire. Hallelujah. Ain't God all right? Yes. Says stay. Terry means stay put. Don't jump up into a ministry. Don't jump up doing nothing till you have an upper room experience. That's why you see so many people fall away because they don't have the, that keeping power. They don't have that upper room experience because that's what he was telling the disciples. All y'all sitting here worried about getting in a position. Don't worry about that. You're going to be in a position once you receive power. But I need you to tear it. Stay put. Don't you go trying to preach my name because you, you're excited now. I, I resurrected. I'm getting ready to go back. But don't you go nowhere. You stay put. Right here in Jerusalem. You stay right here. Until you be endued. Till you be arrayed. Till you be just covered with power. That way when you go to these folk, you go to these places, when people reject you, it don't bother you. When people look at you funny, it don't make you quit. I, you're going to have a power that you take a licking and keep on ticking. You're going to have a power that says I can when it look like everything is impossible. You're going to have a power in you that says, though all odds are against me, though everything is stacked up against me, my upper room experience tells me with God all Things are possible because I believe. I believe because there's something great on the inside of me. I'm filled with something. I feel like everything I put my hand on is going to turn to a blessing because I had an upper room experience. I stayed put. I didn't go nowhere. I stayed there to God feel me. You got to stay there till God feel you. You know it's something different about a field person. You can tell. Yeah, how I do what I do? I'm feel. And I, 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 and I, and I get refreshed. You, you have to go back to the upper room or in the wee hours of the night sometime and get down on your knees and say, God, refresh me. Restore me. Refill me. And oh, this morning, if you're not refilled, this message is for you, you and you. If you're not refilled, you ought to lift your hands where you are and say, God, I need your power. I need your anointing. I need your Holy Ghost power to array my life, to fill my life. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Somebody tell him thank you. But as I close in, in verse 2, Chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. And when the day, this is the day, folk. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. What you saying, Pastor? Let me, let me, let me share with you this morning what Pentecost means. Pentecost was seven weeks. 50 days after they have the Passover, they have the Feast of the Harvest, 50 days. That has, so that leads me to my next point in your life. In order to receive the upper room experience, you have to have a Passover. Oh, y'all need to hear me. What you saying? 
there has to be a death. Paul says, I'm crucified with Christ. I died to the old man. Now I am a new creature. Yet, I died, but I'm living, but it's yet not I. The old flesh been crucified. You got to have a Passover. If, if you don't have a Passover, you cannot ever be endued with power. In other words, there has to be death to your flesh. Flesh has to get out of the way. You got to put flesh in subjection. Your old self got to go. You can't be what you used to be to have a, an upper room experience. There has to be a, why don't you raise your hand, shout across the church, it's got to be a Passover. How you know you done passed from death to life? See, you know people ain't got no Holy Ghost when they don't love the brother. Let me tell you how you know people ain't passed from death to life because 1 John 2 and 20, I think it's 2 and 18, 19. Look what it says. 1 John 2, 18 and 19. We're going to take a time. Little children, I'm going to tell y'all something. This, it is the last time. We live in, this just came to, this wasn't even the sermon, but God just said, we would give this you. That's why it, the scripture didn't come up that fast because it wasn't even in the spirit. Little children. He called us his children. I like that. I'm glad his, I'm his child. He said, little children, it is the last time it's the last times. And as you have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now uh, there are many Antichrists whereby we don't even know. And whereby that it is. It's the last time. We living in the last time. But look what it says in verse 19. You're going to see people walk away from you. Because we're living in the last time. They went out from us. But they were not. So, so pick your face up. <laughs> when people leave you, they weren't with you in the beginning. I don't care who don't like it. Huh? When people leave you, they weren't with you in the beginning. If Look, look what he said. Well, not us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued. No doubt. No doubt. You better shout in here right now. No doubt. Uh -huh. Well, if they would have been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out. Y'all read with me. They went out. Say it. That they might be. Read. That they may be manifest. That they were not. That's why they left you. Because they weren't with you. And they went out to let you know. God going to manifest that they weren't with you. <laughs> I feel like preaching in here this morning. <laughs> Nothing don't bother me because if you're not with me, I don't need you around me no way. I need it. If you're not touching and agreeing with me, you hindering me. Watch a high five. You better shout in here. You don't worry about when God begin to prune the tree. You need to worry about God taking care of me because somebody wasn't for me. That's what happens when you have when you have an encounter, when you have an experience, 
an upper room experience, you're going to know the Holy Ghost is the one that's keeping you. People don't keep you. The Holy Ghost keep you. The Holy Ghost keeps the church. The Holy Ghost keep you going. The Holy Ghost keep everything. Somebody shout glory. Somebody said there has to be a Passover. I'm about to close you. Somebody don't shout glory. I feel like shouting. Great God. Yeah, the prophet Joel says in Joel chapter 2, verse 23. Joel says, be glad then. Y'all ought to be glad right now. I don't know about y'all, but I'm glad. Oh, I'm glad. I'm so glad that that thou we're the children of Zion. You ought to kind of wave your hand. Mm -hmm. Say, I am a, a child of Zion. If you know you're a child of Zion, not just wave one hand. Oh, uh, we both had you. Oh, Lord. Yeah, he said, We are the children of Zion. Be glad, he said, because and rejoice. I need somebody in here this afternoon to just say, I am going to rejoice. Why? Why are you going to rejoice? Because for he had given you. Some former and moderate rain. Pleasant Grove, we had been experiencing some moderate rain. Y'all don't hear me? But uh, in, 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 in Israel, uh, there used to be, uh, they pray for rain in October. And uh, in October, they would. Uh, so seed, and when the seed came up, they would water their own crop. Yeah, but on later in March, it was called the latter rain. And in the latter rain, you didn't have to water your crop. He says in the latter rain, the rivers is gonna water your crop. In other words, you've been going through some things that you've been uh, watering yourself. You've been trying to do it on your own. But when you have an upper room experience, he says, uh, you ain't got to do it no more on your own. The Holy Ghost is going to water your crop. Ain't God all right? The Holy Ghost is going to come in and do what you've been trying to do because she was in the moderate rain. But look what the verse said. But the latter rain, that was a former rain, and it was moderately. But oh, I'm going to send you the latter rain. Somebody said the latter rain. In 2021, get ready. Y'all don't hear me right now. We've been going through the moderate rain. All year long, we've been watering our crops, sowing our seeds. But in 2021, get ready for the latter rain. The power of God gonna fall down in this 2021. Somebody ought to jump up and down. Tell the Lord, thank you right now. Oh! God, all right. Somebody said, fall on me. Fall on me. Let your Holy Ghost fall on me. Fall down. Fall on my family. Fall on me. Ain't God all right. Why don't you jump up and down? Whoa! Feel me. Feel me. Feel me with your power fill me with your holy ghost 
touch me touch me right now ain't God all right ain't God all right somebody say yeah somebody say yeah yeah my Bible tell me Acts 2 and 1 and when the day of Pentecost had fully come they were all somebody said one accord said get on one accord they were in one place they were in one place and suddenly I need somebody to shout suddenly 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 the power came whoosh got in the place somebody said we need your power why don't you jump up and down and say God we need your power thank you Lord thank you Lord lift those hands and tell him thank you tell him thank you thank you for your power God somebody need a touch from him this morning you need that power that upper room experience you can't live without it. You can't preach without it. You can't sing without it. And you can't live this Christian life without it, out, that upper room experience. Upper room. We got to have it, folks. Lift your hands to heaven right now and right where you are. God, give us that Dumas power. Dumas he said, you're going to be filled with power. Dumas power. Greek word. Dumas. It means a power that's in the air. Power that reproduces itself. We need the kind of power that reproduces itself. Same power that Jesus said. It need to be reproduced right here in Pleasant Grove. Right in your home. That power need to be reproduced in your life. It's time out for going through the motion. It's time for the church to catch on fire. When the world see a church on fire, they're going to come running too. Just like the atheists did. Come running when the church is on fire. And the revival begins not on a yearly week that we put together every week, it begins in you. When you get filled and refreshed with the Holy Ghost, the revival starts with each of us individually. Chronicles says, if my people, he didn't talk to the world, he didn't talk to anybody else, he didn't talk to the unsaved, he said, if my people who are saying they're Christians called by my name would humble themselves stop being so prideful and seek my face I'll tell you something how do I know somebody how do I know you when I go someplace sometimes people say I know you because I know your face you have he said seek my face you don't know him until you seek his face. You'll know him if you seek him. He said, my people call by name. Humble them said, seek my face. Know me. Then will I hear. Not when the sinners. He said, when my people call by my name, humble themselves, start praying. That's when I'm going to hear the lamb when they forget about themselves and start thinking about other folks. See, if you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you can help somebody. You can't help nobody without an upper room experience. He said, then you're going to be a witness for me. Once you get filled with power, my people, my people, get filled with the precious Holy Ghost and upper room experience. Thank you, Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, as we come right now, we pray for a showering down, anointing, Lift your hands to heaven right where you are. I don't care where you are. Lift up. 
They said, God, I need your power. I need your power to fall on me. Fall on me right now. I need that upper room experience. Right now. That moves me from doubt to faith. Move me from fear to faith. Move me from unbelief to faith. That upper room experience. That causes me to stand boldly and have a testimony that you're God and you're God alone. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and thank God. Give God a hand clap of praise in this place. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah.